when that goes live, I'll share and get rocking. Okay, so we are live now. Share my screen. Are you seeing a screen with the face of Alex on it? Yep. Super. That's the right one. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get this show on the road then. Guys, welcome to the London Excel Meetup for uh, May 2023. Uh, this is our virtual session. We're lucky enough to have an in-person one last week. And we have uh, Alex Kolokolov here for what should be quite a, a highly anticipated session. So, you know, if anybody's waiting to come in, uh, Taylor should be handling that at the moment. And then when I've done doing a, a small talk and Alex takes over, uh, I'll be helping with that. Hi, Alan. Yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just going through the a few bits. So I just quickly put this slide together, like literally in the last few minutes while I was preparing, because uh, I don't normally introduce myself, but people have been asking me <laughs> to do so. And sometimes at the in-person ones, people ask me, what do you do? <laughs> but, oh, people don't know who I am. I, I should at least say a couple of words on me. So uh, we're just talking about where we are based. Uh, I live in Ipswich, which is about an hour from London by train, uh, farther or two from the, the personal side of things. And for those who might be new to the group or new to like what we do here, um, I'm very much in the, the Excel field, uh, hence the name of the group, although we do do some kind of data platform stuff here. And uh, with what Alex is going to do today is more of a, a general outside of the Microsoft uh, scope as well. Uh, but obviously organising this group, YouTube channel for many years, written books, contributing uh, kind of different ways for a few words on me. I'll allow Alex, as I normally do, to um, introduce himself in a little while. I just want to mention about upcoming events, as I typically do. And unfortunately, it's all a bit thin on the ground at the moment. So I don't have a huge amount to say here live. But if you're a member of the group, keep your eye out because there are some events kind of in process. Um, so the next one is the 6th of June which is online again. So that's next up. Uh, you can see it on screen. We've got Paul Martin delivering um, on using XMLA with Power BI for end user reporting in Excel. And then this is not on the, the group yet. So information coming this week, hopefully, if I set it up. Uh, but on the 28th of June, in person only, um, based in London, we have Rishi Sapra, who's going to present on building a, a credit rating model in Power BI. And um, then in person again, well, I've put some question marks there because we're struggling with venues after June um, currently. So something will be sorted. Uh, but we do have John Peltier, who many of you might know, especially with the, the topic today, because from the Excel world, he is the, the charting guru. And he's in London. He's you know, he's based in the States, he's over here coming through, so we got in contact. So we've, we've nabbed him on the 2nd of August to present live, which is pretty cool, uh, but we need to get a venue. <laughs> so that date is confirmed because you know, he's here. Um, we just need to hunt down that venue for details. And then we've also got the 9th of August where something's in process. Uh, some more news on that soon, but if you're interested in kind of bearing dates in mind, there's an in-person event uh, in, in scheduling process for Monday the 9th. I say, unfortunately, no more news for now. Just keep your eye out because I should be getting some online events booked up for, for August and so on as soon as I can and, and venue news as soon as we can. Um, I think, oh, I've got one more slide, don't I? For those who are new to all this jazz, uh, we are live on YouTube at the moment in addition to Zoom. This is all being recorded. The link to the YouTube is on the events page. Uh, that is the same link that's streaming it live right now is also the replay link. It's the same link. 
Um, so feel free to use that if you want to watch Alex's presentation back and you can pause and rewind and yeah, get the experience in your own time or watch it again. Um, yes, and it will also be included in a follow-up email. So after this event, we always send an email either tomorrow or, or the day after, depending on how, how time is. But we only do it to those who RSVP to the event. Uh, that would have the replay link. It will have information, upcoming events, anything that Alex would like us to share uh, would all be included in that follow-up email. If you want it, make sure you've RSVP'd. And that is pretty much it for me. So I'll stop my sharing and, and hand over to what you're all here for, which is Alex. Um, Alex, if you can take it away, sir. OK. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Alan, thank you very much for this chance to share my experience with uh, all these great people. And um, let's start. Um, I will launch my screen. And uh, today we have such a positive topic, uh, dashboard symmetry walk. <laughs> and uh, what I mean, uh, I will um, tell about uh, these dashboards uh, which survived in a cruel corporate world. And uh, those uh, good, beautiful uh, dashboard, which uh, realized to be useless. And uh, oh, oh um, OK, uh, there was some interruption. OK, and some dashboards, which which dead, <laughs> and uh, some of them survived. And uh, in a few words about me, mm. I work in the field of business intelligence for the last 14 years, and uh, dashboards uh, are my personal personal passion. And uh, I like to visualize data and uh, mm, like to teach people how to do it. And uh, most of my experience uh, related with Microsoft uh, Stack. I started from. SQL Server, uh, Advanced Excel, Power Pivot, Query, and uh, mm, later I started to work with Power BI since it appeared in 2015. And uh, I have uh, two books published, um, and uh, my recent book, Make Your Data Speak, uh, which uh, which is a uh, guide, step-by-step -step guide for um, dashboard uh, visualization with Microsoft Excel. And, uh, and uh, I have some accomplishments uh, which, uh, which my mom consider uh, which are great. <laughs> um, let uh, me tell. So I have, that's my book. And also I have developed my own visual for Power BI Gallery. And uh, uh, really, I think that it, 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 it's now it's our great tool for us, for my company, which uh, continue to uh, develop uh, Power BI implementation products. And also, I have founded uh, Data Visualization Award, Make Your Data Speak. And uh, uh, maybe you've heard about... Uh, Information is beautiful award, and we have a competitive, competitive award and provide more diversity. And my goal is to unite uh, data journalists, people from art, uh, data art, with and connect them with people from business intelligence field. And uh, we had two separate nominations. And uh, this February we have. Uh, mm, Finish this award, and really, we have great projects. Projects, and not only on Power BI, but Tableau and other uh, custom solutions. So I'm trying to develop um, plus cross-platform community. Uh, that's that's my contribution to um, business intelligence industry. Um, that's about me, and. Uh, um, what I'm going to tell you today, uh, tell some stories. So our agenda is um, online sessions from um, modified projects from 
portfolio of, of my company, uh, data is changed, but story is real. And uh, I will tell you um, about these cases. And uh, you, you need to decide uh, to answer the question, has this dashboard survived or not? That's uh, our game uh, tonight. And uh, uh, for beginning, um, I'll, I would like to tell you about my problem, about problem uh, which my clients uh, say when they start business intelligence projects and they have expectations. Uh, they uh, already heard about dashboards, about visualization, infographics, and they ex expect that their dashboards will look uh, the same as they look at galleries. But when they start projects or when they fail their project, they come to me and show their re reality. And <laughs> that's how their Excel dashboard looks. And it's a real example of Excel dashboards. But problem is not in Excel. Uh, some people use Tableau. Some people use Power BI. And uh, mm, their dashboard looks messy. Uh, and uh, instead of creative infographics, they get tons of bar charts or maybe spreadsheets. That's their problem. But um, my discovery that uh, the state of art, the design, um, is not connected with uh, this implementation. And uh, this ugly dashboard has the same chance to survive uh, rather than this beautiful. And really, it's unpredictable. And I'm trying to find some correlations between design and uh, uh, future um, of uh, dashboard in a cruel corporate world. And uh, for the start, start I have um, a couple of questions to you. Uh, so uh, the first question is about your experience with um, data visualization with Microsoft Excel. And uh, oh. Do you, do you love or do you hate Excel when you start drawing charts, uh, building dashboards? Because some my students, um, clients have, have opposite opinion. Some of them love, but some of them hate and they're seeking for another one uh, beautiful tool, another one artificial, artificial intelligence. And I'm interested in your experience, oh, Eric. Love and hate both. <laughs> yes, it's a strong, very strong connection based on uh, necessary ail. <laughs> Great. Um, and I have next question. Um, so I understand that all of you are Excel professionals, and uh, you're. You accept it as a necessary evil. But what is the best tool ever, uh, in your opinion? Uh, best data viz uh, or dashboarding tool? Uh, is it Excel? Is it Power BI? Is it Tableau? Or maybe you already work with Midjourney and ChatGPT uh, who draw dashboards <laughs> for you. OK, and we have great competition. Power BI versus Tableau. I I hope that you will not uh, exclude uh, a member of Excel community who who loves Tableau. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. <laughs> okay, mm. but I don't see replies. Yeah, Excel is my only tool. Okay, uh, just at the beginning. I agree with you, and uh, mm, I still use Microsoft Excel, and I want to share you some example how how it may like look like, and uh, this is an example. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, okay, and the first story which I want to tell you about uh, wage fund analysis, uh, which we will do with uh, Microsoft Excel. So uh, what we have? 
we have our wage fund about uh, 7.8 uh, million dollars we have actual expenses of uh, 8.1 and what we see that uh, we have uh, uh, over uh, expanded it 104 percent um below we see the line chart and uh, see two peaks uh, two quarterly peaks in January and April, and I may assume some seasonal trends. And below we have bar charts, uh, which show us ranking uh, by divisions, um, production, uh, management, sales staff, logistics, and uh, expenses by items, salary, bonus, extra budget, and uh, others. And let's try to find some drivers of this uh, our uh, expenditures and maybe find some reasons and uh, what i see from the first point that the most expenses we have for actual expenses we have production workers and let's use slicers on the light panel and find production workers and on the Top, we see that execution is 127%. So it's more significant than average by company. And uh, uh, the largest item is salary, but salary is uh, within our uh, budget. But bonus, once, uh, one second, I'll fix it. So bonus, what we have? That we have uh, for bonus, we have our expenses uh, almost twice, and we have two peaks uh, January and April. And for April, uh, we see that we fit our limit, but for January, we don't have target for our um, bonus. And uh, I have an assumption that someone just forget to plan it, and maybe it's not uh, managers. Uh, mistake but uh, it's a mistake of budgeting and uh, what's interesting about uh, our regular regular salary dynamics let's clear our filters for um, our production stuff that we had a uh, weird plan so uh, this green line uh, demonstrates that we plan to reduce our uh, staff, our payments from January to April, and uh, rapidly increase it in May. But what we see in actual, in real data, that we have slow growing trend uh, from February and uh, continuing to June. And again, I see this, that there are some problems with budgeting. Uh, and problems that we forget to take into account some trends um, and really um, going deeper, I understand that there's no such uh, crucial mistakes in management, but uh, we see mistakes in planning. And if we will look at the last month, June, we have execution uh, which fits our budget, 90%, and uh, see that uh, this situation has normalized. That's an example of uh, simple uh, dashboard, dashboard with Microsoft Excel. And really, it was developed about four years ago uh, as a temporary solution when company uh, migrated their business intelligence platform from Tableau to Power BI. But during this process, they, uh, they failed some stages and really, uh, when Power BI data flows was crashed uh, with, by some reasons, this dashboard survived and really um, company use and update this data for, for a backup. Uh, for any reason, if corporate platform will crash, they have uh, this simple uh, solution and really... Um, Really, it, it works simply. That's uh, how it works. Uh, I, I'm not going to um, explain so how it works. I, um, so, sorry, um, I 
I, yes, now I fixed my screen. Uh, but um, in the end of this uh, workshop, I may show some some details. But um, let's go to the next um, case. So what's our um, our tour? So we started our uh, tour, and uh, first the first dead bird was survived uh, in this cruel corporate world. <laughs> uh, but let's uh, talk about next solution and uh, i have a story of um dashboard developed with tableau or oh, i have crash at the beginning <laughs> but now it yes it's launched and um, interesting story it uh, started uh, during the pandemic um when Companies uh, switched their sales force from in-person communications to online communications. And it was a pharmaceutical company. And uh, they realized that their leaders who performed well in in-person format um, worked not so well with online communications. And uh, the branch manager... Uh, European branch managers wanted to understand these correlations and um, understand how to how to teach uh, their stuff. And uh, um, data scientists, experienced data scientists, collected this data and developed uh, this dashboard with Tableau. And it's uh, part of this dashboard. Dashboard we have some client segments, uh, um, directions to receive inside uh, medical clinics, uh, dermatology, therapy, pediatrics, and others. And we have um, different sections of these dashboards. That's by cities, um, correlations by customer segments, uh, by um, divisions, and uh, integral rankings of managers by calls by day, average call durations, uh, share of positive responses um, and by by sales team by regions uh, whatever and how do you think what uh, what our stakeholder said when he looked at this dashboard uh, for the first time what's your opinion what was the first impression Uh, and one second, I turn my chart back. How to do it? Ah, yes, I see now. Don't worry, there is always Excel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, the first express impression was yes, please uh, develop me a slide. Oh my god, I don't uh, understand what's going on. That was first impression, and of course, um, high level manager uh, was disappointed. And uh, for the next uh, stage, we helped uh, to this company and uh, developed um, executive summary because we have a lot of dashboards, and uh, uh, we tried to develop um, dashboards for dashboards. <laughs> and what that's what we've got. I'll show you. And uh, here we used, uh, already used uh, Power BI. That's our Power BI dashboard. And uh, I, I'll disc explain, describe uh, what, what can we see. So we have uh, on top, we have our uh, totals, our sales plan, uh, uh, execution, uh, networking target, the communication plan, uh, our mm, share of positive responses. It's a synonym of um, conversion of uh, effective call and uh, number of contacts, I mean call, video calls per day. And we have uh, this. Mm, so in average, we see that it's green. Uh, but when we look at the map, uh, this is a lot of red points and uh, uh, really um, 
our uh, division, European division manager, was uh, surprised how many uh, these bad points we have. For example, uh, there was to enter Helsinki. Uh, we look at Helsinki and see that our sales target is not achieved, 93%, but uh, contact target is exceeded. We talk a lot with our customers, but it uh, mm, does help us to mm, sell. And if I press at Helsinki, what I see, uh, I see the details. I see four person who works there and uh, see who is in green zone, red zone. I see that we have 300% uh, of uh, execution our contacts with pediatrics, but uh, really we have the uh, lack of our sales or communication with other uh, industries. And what's interesting, uh, I can see um, sales, I can select any salesperson, for example, who work, who, who takes fourth place in our ranking and uh, see that uh, he mm, is underachieved this goal a few but the first the, our best salesperson performs well and uh, uh, he has a good positive response conversion 49 percent when i look at the bottom of our ranking i see people who talk a lot uh for example 111 percent but they have a low positive response and um, mm, real the insight was that it doesn't depend on number of contacts per day and uh, usually people who work better have not so many contacts first place uh, second place non count nine contacts but they have high level of conversion it may look uh, obvious uh, what what i'm telling now but for this company uh, it was it, it 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 not it was it was not so evident and really uh, this reality is that they have a lot of bad uh, underperformed cities. It was uh, really um, great discovery for them, and really they transformed the education education program for their sales staff. And I have question for you: uh, How do you think? So the first uh, dashboard was wasn't survived. Uh, it was it was messy. Uh, it was uh, unusable for high level management. But how do you think was this dashboard survived or not? What's your opinion? Okay, Pierre thinks that it was survived, survived. Um, share your thoughts. Uh, why? Uh, yes, it uh, it started uh, very well, but there was a problem uh, that this data uh, well, was collected, uh, extracted, uh, collected manually by uh, author of uh, uh, this dashboard, this data scientist. And uh, there was some um, expert data from, there was no direct connection to databases, some extraction, um, data preparation. And uh, uh, this man who, um, when this data scientist left the company, there was no person to update uh, this data. And uh, three months later, when really they needed um, data refresh, new questions, uh, it was unreal to, to update it, to connect new data. And really, they used <laughs> Microsoft Excel uh, to get their rapid insights and uh, forget about this beautiful dashboard uh, because it was uh, too too complicated, not in perception, uh, but in support. Uh, that's a 
bad uh, story that finally is there, but then. <laughs> and let's go to another example. Uh, there's a picture. I will describe it in a few words uh, about um, auto dealer, car dealer. And uh, um, we had originally the same task to prepare um, executive summary for chief marketing officer. Uh, and this company had um, their in-house marketing team who operate marketing campaigns, uh, uh, targeting uh, search engine optimization and uh, outdoor ads, some uh, different directions. Uh, they have also budget, uh, their target for impressions, clicks, CTR, CPV and other indicators. Uh, by different direction, mobile, social, video ads, and uh, below we see um, charts um, and by indicators, by channels, and uh, on the bottom of this dashboard we have a table with details uh, by each channel, and if we select any channel, we see these details below. Uh, that's simple dashboard. Um, I think that uh, you are familiar with such kinds of uh, dashboards. And uh, please make your assumption, uh, has this dashboard survived or not? Your bets? <laughs> So, um, <laughs> why this dashboard didn't survive? So, as I said, uh, it's not connected with data visualization. Uh, it's connected uh, to company culture, uh, team capabilities. And uh, um, this, this company had their in-house market, digital marketing team and uh, mm, they updated so they had uh, connections to all the data sources um, as uh, managers for facebook for google and others and uh, uh, after this uh, start for a high level dashboard they uh, we developed uh, together about uh, five dashboards for uh, middle managers uh, for analysts uh, for each channel and uh, finding deeper insights. And uh, this dashboard, it, I think it's not so beautiful, but it survived because um, it was demanded on the different levels, high level, middle, uh, middle management level, and uh, uh, this data set provided um, insights for uh, marketing analysts. So, um, it, it was demanded and uh, there were, were reasons to update uh, all the data and it was this dashboard was were used uh, at uh, monthly meetings uh, weekly meetings and uh, in um, day by day uh, meetings uh, let's go so this dashboard has survived let's go to the next case mm -hmm or uh, logistic company, uh, logistic uh, European company, and uh, they work with cargoes, some transport, uh, railway, and uh, even uh, sea roads and delivery um, uh, with uh, some B2B, uh, B2B cargoes such uh, machinery, vehicles, uh, some exp very expensive materials, and uh, uh, feature. What's what's the feature? They collected uh, some um, market data, so open data with benchmarks, some industry trends, and uh, matched them uh, with their internal data about their uh, sales, self cost, and other indicators. And uh, they were discovering trends uh, about their market share, uh, about their um, competitors, 
about demand in the different regions, different uh, industries. And uh, that's an example uh, of one dashboard, but uh, what you may see, a lot of uh, um, buttons uh, to see in tons, dollars, euros, uh, indicators by average, average between top 10, uh, minimum, maximum. And we have, we had a lot of tool tips, pop-up windows. So such complicated uh, dashboards. And uh, that's, it's uh, one of 10, uh, 10 dashboards about uh, logistic industry and uh, uh, open data or market data, benchmarks and uh, uh, internal data of this company. And uh, audience, audience uh, was um, middle management, uh, middle managers and, and uh, analysts, uh, project managers of uh, who, who were responsible for corporate clients. And uh, what do you think uh, about future of uh, this dashboard? Is it still using or uh, it's uh, dead? Uh, maybe it's dead already. Dead. Uh, why do you think that it's survived? Okay, but I have <laughs> too many colors, <laughs> too many indicators, too many colors. Mm. Uh, but Again, mm, the problem was not with colors. Um, problem was that uh, it's um, mm, a bit sophisticated dashboard, dashboard with a lot of uh, buttons, um, slicers, uh, um, sophisticated measures uh, mm, as this dashboard. And uh, mm, when, when we started to Mm. When the company started to use it, they, they they realized that they need ten dashboards more with another points of view. So they tried to to get like um, all up cube in the Power BI dashboards, uh, and uh, they demanded not for ten charts with uh, five uh, switches, but they demanded for uh 20 40 charts and they had too many questions and it was um and when we um uh, estimated our uh exp our uh costs to to develop all this uh all these dashboards it was about uh, maybe 50 50 thousand dollars so it was very expensive because it was uh, very, very sophisticated. And finally, this company decided that uh, it's cheaper <laughs> to use Excel and uh, not to maintain, uh, not to su support this uh, very, very sophisticated dashboard. And really, this customer paid for our uh, work and uh, used. So um, they started from 10 dashboards, 10 dashboards, uh, six months later, they used just five dashboards, and uh, mm, one year later, they used just one summary dashboard, uh, and sometimes they just uh, put screenshots from this summary uh, to PowerPoint and uh, add their data labels. Um, Yes, I say uh, 50,000, but it was our estimation according to the customer requirements. So uh, to, to, make he, to make him happy. And really, uh, it was uh, not, uh, it, it, it might be affordable for this company. It's a big company. But uh, um, the value, value of all this uh, visualization was not for fifty thousand. That's uh, that's how we um, and really uh, we had a chance to make a product 
uh, data product from this data and uh, estimated our efforts to maintain, to con continue collecting this external data, but really it was too, <laughs> too hard to, uh, too complicated. Let's go to the next project. Uh, that's for, uh, it was developed for broker from bro uh, like family, family business uh, on Cyprus uh, who work with uh, some funds, uh, some uh, company store stocks. You see this Netflix, Amazon, NVIDIA, Facebook, and uh, other. And they uh, manage some, some families' portfolios. And uh, they collect uh, this data with um, Google Sheets, uh, put this data uh, manually, and uh, analyzed uh, their weekly, monthly, or mm, random meetings. Uh, their performance and uh, performance of their uh, brokers. Uh, you know that, that's a brief descriptions description and uh, how do you think how how long uh, has this uh, dashboard lived? Is it still alive or uh, it's? Uh, there is no actual data anymore. Maybe it's dead. Why? Let's be optimist. <laughs> and um, really, this dashboard is still alive. Um, because it's it was pretty simple and really it might be developed um, with Excel and really it has a simple data. Um, now they have some connections to stock or to stocks, but really it's simple. They have their um, clear metrics. Um, it's not so sophisticated as previous dashboard. And uh, that's an example of a simple solution, uh, which, which is still alive. The next example, mm, not so beautiful, mm, but um, clear, in my opinion. Um, this dashboard we developed for um, IT outsourcing company. They have uh, more than they have about uh, more than one thousand, maybe two thousand stuff. And uh, here we have um, key indicators about their uh, revenue, about their wage fund, uh, cost per one employee, their uh, share of their uh, wage fund in revenue, and their self cost. And uh, the summary about their three their department, software, consulting, innovation. So the, the, the key resource of this company is uh, their um, engineering staff, and they uh, monitor these, these metrics. And uh, how do you think? Um, is it still alive or not? Or this dashboard um, that uh, has other corporate uh, reports. Thank you, Stephen. I agree that it looks presentation ready. And uh, we tried to develop um, this summary view. Uh, of course, we had uh, some um, appendixes with details, with uh, trends. But uh, it's always when I show you a single picture, uh, the project contains more dashboards. And uh, here, here, here I have uh, another interesting story that uh, we prepared this summary 
about so we have two two different data sources and uh, two different data owners uh people from financial department and people from human resources department and uh, mm, they had they had some conflicted interests and during the process of uh, data preparation they really uh, denied uh, all the requirements to prepare there in time because they said that they each of them wanted to to own all this data set all the data warehouse and uh, even it <laughs> it uh, department also was the third conflicting part and uh, mm, i was i was observing this clash and uh, but the fallout for this project that these dashboards leave just just three months and uh, really they some of them during this corporate war some of people left the company um project manager left the company and really uh, there was no person to continue the project and uh, uh, to make decision who will own this data who will be responsible uh, for the actual um, not even for um, data refresh but uh, to understand what's the right metrics because all the conflicting finance uh, financial and human resources people said that this dashboard displays wrong data it's wrong look at my excel i have uh, correct data because i collected it but all your dashboard uh, con contains a lot of mistakes i don't know who's responsible for these mistakes it's your subcontractor Maybe Alex did these mistakes, and really there was a lot of negotiations. I tried to be a mediator for these people, but I failed. And uh, really, mm, I tried to find a compromise and uh, develop a simple uh, <laughs> presentation view um, there, but, but really it it dead. Uh, Krista. As the deja vu so <laughs> maybe yes maybe not only i have this uh, <laughs> stories and we have um we have uh one uh last one story and uh, this story started from a crm implementation project and the um, company started new uh like new business process to sell uh new product by subscription model and uh, make like uh, matrix project uh, team they have different uh, they have salesperson from different departments and uh, uh started to uh, started to fill their sales funnel and uh, really i joined this project and i like to uh, tell another one story with microsoft excel here it is and uh, there was a problem like, let's align it yes uh, one second i will go almost to full screen screen mode as possible with excel so what we see we have a team of um, four salesperson, Alex, Maria, Peter, and Victor. And we have stages of their sales process. Cold outreach, so a list of companies for uh, outreach meetings, presentations, offers, and contacts. And uh, uh, we had weekly slicers. This is a data source, just a flat table. and. Uh, some of them reported uh, by phone or by email and the uh, uh, project manager collected this data and uh, get meetings with, with this uh, simple dashboard. And uh, we were looking for 
gaps in this, uh, not for gaps, for bottlenecks in this uh, process. And uh, for example, we had uh, uh, in two months of working, January and February, we just we had just five contacts, but our goal was 20 contacts. And uh, I filter any salesperson, for example, Alex. Uh, from the first uh, view, I see that his funnel look, looks balanced. There is no bottleneck. Uh, but what I see is that there is um, going down trend of meetings. So he started uh, well in January, but he's not appointing new meetings with clients. And I see the repeating trends that there are less and less presentations and uh, uh, less offers. And uh, we explained to him that he need to, to start to appoint new meetings, uh, else his funnel will become empty. Another one uh, example, Maria. And, what's, and she has the same result as Alex. She has two contracts. But Alex has a well-balanced funnel. But Maria is not so, uh, not even good, but we have a difference. And she has a bottleneck at the first, at the second stage meeting. But later she has a great conversion. You see that from eight meetings, we have four presentations, three offers and two contracts. Uh, but um, at this step of meetings, she has she had a problem that uh, she feels she she feels herself free in in person communications, but for cold outreach she's uh, she's frustrated. Another story for Victor, who has opposite situation. He's he feels free uh, for cold outreach for a point in meetings and uh, from these meetings. It comes to nine presentations, but only two offers and just one contract. Uh, but Mary works better at this stage. And also we have a Peter uh, who um, haven't signed any contract. And there, from the first impression, he um, he's the bird, he, he's outsider, but. If we will look at his uh, charts, line, line graphs, we see these uh, positive trends. And really, uh, he just started later in January, in the end of January. But uh, finally, all his charts is growing up. And really, once one month ago, one month later in March, he exceeded all these plans and uh, he signed Let's prepare this filter. Six contracts. And uh, really, Alex, let's look at this. He started to appoint new meetings and uh, achieve his goal. And we, uh, Maria and Victor, uh, started to work together. And uh, Victor was appointing meetings, presentations, and Maria was closing the deals. Uh, that's an example of real uh, business case uh, and the uh, problem which was solved with uh, this simple Excel dashboard. And uh, mm, it was faster, easier than with, uh, to, to develop a custom report in, uh, in it was Salesforce. Uh, and uh, really, this company still use. Uh, this modified dashboard, and uh, really, I taught all their sales staff to, to use dashboards and uh, find this uh, some gaps, some bottlenecks. And uh, as it was, let me remind, it was about seven years ago, but uh, this simple, uh, and <laughs> it was seven years ago before we got a uh, funnel chart in <laughs> Microsoft Excel. <laughs> And it was built uh, with some uh, um, just empty, 
uh, empty bars to move it to center. But really, this dashboard is um, still alive. Uh, yes, it's still alive. So um, that's that's all for my uh, cemetery walk. Not, not even cemetery, but tour for copper dashboards. And really, it's hard to find the correlation between de between design and uh, the future of uh, the dashboard. But really, it depends on the corporate culture uh, and the abilities to maintain, to support and continue this project. And um, depends on the, um, how middle level, uh, top level management uh, is involved. And uh, what I like to say for conclusion, so let's start from simple prototypes, uh, like most viable, uh, uh, minimal viable prototype. And really Excel uh, remains the, the best tool for such prototypes and you are able to apply uh, date visualization best practices uh, in this tool. It's pretty simple. And uh, everything what I uh, demonstrated made with uh, st standard pivot tables with any, without any micros or some custom, develop custom development, it's, it's pretty simple. So, but... I remind, uh, but remember that the edge between uh, personal analytics and prototypes, and when you go to um, corporate level, uh, it's better uh, to use platform like Power BI to scale your analytical experience. And uh, I hope that my my mistakes, my uh, experience positive or negative will be helpful for you uh, and uh, you will make your data speak so if you have any questions let's continue our conversation so that's my uh, contacts let's stay in touch via linkedin twitter and also uh, follow or follow our socials and uh, let's uh let's stay in touch that's all for my speech and uh, uh i go to our reading our chat axel life schrodinger's cat <laughs> axel means <clears throat> Um, yes, Mark, uh, great conclusion that dashboards don't die or not, not because of tool, not because Excel, Power BI or other, but because of environment. Mm. So there's so much... Um to this, isn't it? Like for, for us as a group and probably many people on this call, you know, all from different walks of life. Um, but we tend to focus on the technical skills of using the tool, whether that's Excel, whether that's Power BI. Um, but there's more going into it. You know, there's that, there's the telling of the story. There's the, you know, whether the audience can use it. And then obviously the, the politics, you know, where's the data coming from? Um, who has access to it? There's there's much more to it than the yeah the tool. Yes, I agree with you. It was good hearing some of the stories behind uh, behind the, the dashboards as well. You know the reasons for their creation and how they were used and why they <laughs> died or failed and a, a few people were commenting but it, it often came down to you know how simple it is you know people 
they've got busy days, they want an easy life, if it's taking up too much time. Yes. And that reward, uh, are they using it to warrant the time that's being put into it? And really, it, so my, my advice uh, for you, uh, if you work with your work as uh, outsourcer or within company, so um, save your project and uh, uh, for further needs, um, make so make fake data. But so I I I, disp I demonstrated all these dashboards with fake data, but with uh, real story. And of course, it takes time to uh, modify this data and keep some correlations, uh, some insights. Um, but really, it helps to uh, remember these lessons and uh, to um, avoid uh, further mistakes. Hmm. And, uh, that's uh, one positive, uh, useful point. And uh, to be honest, it's. Uh, helps you to build your portfolio and not just uh, build uh, not just show charts but uh, tell stories and uh, tell these insights and really it helps me for my customer relationships when i um, tell the, them related stories not just uh, build uh, showing charts Oh, I have a question. How do you go about getting a customer to tell you what they want? I find that it's the most difficult part of the process. Um, so um, I have some techniques uh, described in my book. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are pretty easy. So um, don't, don't hesitate to ask them about their decisions. And uh, um, what uh, what hypotheses do they have? What actions uh, will they make based on this uh, data? And really, uh, some customers don't know what to do. Uh, they have uh, expectations of magic dashboard, which will provide them insights. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, we understand that this company uh, is not ready for real dashboards for business intelligence project. Uh, and uh, I aware them and uh, we don't start this project because I don't want to bury another one dashboard. <laughs> uh, it's, it's in a few words. and But it's the most difficult part because um, really... Mm, customer, they, they their expectations uh, is uh, are unclear. They have their uh, assumptions and other internal problems. Oh, Pierre say, I said, Pierre says, I ask them to take a pen and paper. <laughs> yes, that's a good approach. Um, um, when because. Uh, I use the same uh, way, but uh, I need to impress my customer and I take a tablet and stylus <laughs> and <laughs> use digital tool for the same <laughs> reason. And uh, all of this is, uh, makes a wow effect. Uh, let's keep it simple. A box there. Tell me. Yes. Do you have suggestions to see current data visualization trends? It seems that a billion's hem seem change over time. Mm -hmm. Um, a good question, Charles. Um, to be honest, uh, as a person who's uh, um, who works in this industry for a long time. Um, I I understand that I am becoming conservative, and uh, really I understand that um, this um, the design or creativity uh, are not uh, related with the result, and uh, 
I follow the minimalistic style, flat design, and uh, I understand if uh, company uh, is uh, conservative, for, especially we if we deal with corporations, I follow just uh, best practice and uh, uh, use uh, cards for totals, use bar charts, don't use pie charts, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and some best practices. But of course, if uh, I understand that I need to surprise my customer, uh, I I pick some cherry on a pie uh, to understand, to, to demonstrate the capabilities, especially uh, to show the difference uh, between Power BI and Excel. And I uh, show that we can build interactive waterfall chart, Sankey chart, Gantt chart. Uh, we, but, but of course, I know how to build them with Microsoft Excel. But I will not tell to my customer how to do it. <laughs> but for uh, if we'll talk about uh, Excel MVP prototype, we of course use uh, simple visuals. Uh, the most popular visual is a table with conditional formatting. What advice would you give a younger you on how to make a long-lasting dashboard? Oh, that's some very deep question. <laughs> um, um, maybe when I was uh, young, I uh, suggested that. Uh, that customer uh, is uh, more interested uh, than me to maintain uh, this project uh, to deliver data. But uh, I realized that they don't think uh, some uh, st steps uh, further. And uh, mm, my advice is to think more about risks about um, some some problems uh, related with with communications uh, with uh, culture well, for example i told you about uh conflicting groups in uh, inside uh, the company uh people from finance people from human resources uh and uh, younger me uh, didn't think about these risks that, that's that's uh, that's my boring advice for younger me <laughs> but younger me uh, wouldn't hear this uh, <laughs> conservative man he's got it MVP uh, yes MVP means uh, uh, not not most valuable player. <laughs> it means uh, minimal minimal viable product. So this uh, mm, I use it as a synonym of prototype, simple prototype which uh, demonstrate uh, which which solves this uh, simple with uh, key task without any design features without any polishing so it's mm, it's similar to draft but uh, draft with real data uh, which uh, solves its task with minimal uh, efforts minimal viable product How um how involved do you tend to get in this this process, Alex? If you if you're getting a, a project with a client and you know a question from earlier about 
finding out what the customer wants. And um, on the flip side, if you had a customer who who thinks they know what they want and they're telling you like what visuals, like I have this table down here, you know, <laughs> I love this like, 3D chart, a couple of drop down lists. Um, do you get involved much in saying, look, that's not the best way this is? Um, yes, I, I still work with my clients and, uh, mm, but mm, at, at the current moment, uh, when I'm, uh, old and experienced, I have some titles and, uh, I'm <laughs> an authoritative person for my client. And uh, if my client asks uh, for some freaky chart, uh, I say that, sorry, uh, but according to the best practices, ac according to chapter four of my book, it's <laughs> unnecessary. But Alex, what if it looks pretty? <laughs> uh, believe me, uh, it, uh, it will look pretty for my... Uh, for a first uh, week, but uh, <laughs> if you're going to use it day by day, as you promised, it's not the best uh, way to uh, monitor your indicators. And I suggest you uh, use uh, another tool and let's go uh, and look at our sample from our gallery. So uh, my advantage, and ad not, not even my advantage, but advantage when you build your portfolio, you have a lot of um, examples to convince your client. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, as uh, Pierre said, your client may draw uh, some freaky chart, but uh, if you demonstrate your interactive dashboard and say that Siemens used the same uh, approach and uh, uh, mention your um, authoritative clients. And of course, when I go to the meeting to my clients, I analyze uh, his industry, his competitors. And uh, um, so uh, use some, not just dirty tricks, but it's about uh, <laughs> negotiations, about sales approach, but now in our modern world, all, all this connected. That's, that's why I highlight the importance of portfolio, uh, of industry levels, and, uh, mm, and make uh, a contribution to, mm, how to say, industry knowledge writing books, uh, writing blogs, developing um, projects and uh, uh, applying uh, these projects to any data visualization contests. And if you are a award-winning person, uh, you have more chance to convince your client, especially, especially uh, if we talk with different groups. So um, I talk about uh, management uh, level, but uh, within your client, you may have experienced designer who has his uh, personal opinion. You may have experienced uh, experience data scientist. And of course, they um, think that they know they are better than you. <laughs> and Mm, you need to uh, be it's so I don't say that you need to be an authority for for, for anyone let's start from the one field but uh, also if you work with a team uh, you may uh, invite other authorities uh, for your negotiations mm. Um, talking about a team, yeah, you can see the question about security. I don't know if you're, yeah. Uh, question about uh, security of the, the report is shared by many. Um, actually, I don't understand um, this question. So is it about um, this uh, demo cases? 
or about uh, sharing in general? I think it's sharing in general, like people getting access to the data uh, through the report. You know, in Power BI, you can shut down options. To oh, if you data. talk about Power BI sharing options, um, I don't. Uh, so I don't know news about um, security problems uh, for Microsoft. So we heard about. Um, hacks for twitter for uh for iphone users but i don't remember any hacks for microsoft users and really uh this data uh enough secured but really i'm it's my personal opinion and i just accept that uh, it's a re really very secure platform and don't worry about this and uh, the, the, we have more risks uh, of human factor who may export this data <laughs> via microsoft excel <laughs> and send it via email <laughs> okay i have a question um advice to getting clients or starting a business freelancer some experience so i will remind the, my advice to build your portfolio um i uh, that's the first and uh, going this way apply your projects your portfolio to any data visualization visualization awards contests uh there are a lot of uh, a lot of contests every not maybe if not every month but every quarter enterprise dna community information is beautiful our award make your data speak and if you apply um, to any contest you will um, upgrade your skill and really build great portfolio and uh, share your experience make contribution Especially, uh, you may start from Microsoft Data Stories Gallery and apply your project and get highlights. So there are simple ways. So I don't have a specific uh, growth hack in this industry, but uh, just just do it and uh, do it permanently. Mm. oh so uh i think that our uh discussion comes to its end yes so i was just reading the uh, messages in the chat um okay i'll tell you what we'll do well, well let me shut down the youtube stream so we're still streaming there at the moment uh which will put us just into into zoom and then we'll see if anybody wants to talk or uh carry on okay, i'm closing the, the youtube stream now